In today's video, I'm going to show you how important subsonic is for your enclosure as well as output and quality of your output, as well as for SBL score. This number right here in the subsonic is very important and critical for your system as well as for SPL and output. So stay tuned throughout this video as I demonstrate in my system how it affects output and how I can actually benefit by having the right correct setting for subsonic on your enclosure amplifier setting. So first off and foremost, I'll just give you some history on why you use subsonic. A lot of people normally have subsonic turned off on your amplifier because you want to have the most output, but truly you don't want to always have the most output on your enclosure in your subwoofer because what happens is if you have it off, it's gonna be putting a lot more full power range outside of your bandwidth. And if you have it turned off or all the way down and say this amplifier has 10 Hertz, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up putting too much power at frequency ranges that you don't want it to. It's gonna cause your coil to get hot at certain ranges that you may not want it to, depending on how you play your music, as well as it's gonna affect your SPL score. So you're gonna find out reasons why on this video. All right, so let me go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna keep it right now. Remember right where it is, right at the 12 o'clock. And I'm going to do some tests on my system real quick. So as I do these tests, just remember that you can use this concept for your own build. Highly recommend if you don't already get a SPL meter. That's what I'm using for this, these tests. I have an SSA meter. Ignore the dash and the, the way it looks. It's all ugly, but the concept is what you want to go by for your system. So as always, if you watch my other videos on Jacob Vile 2, I always try to do my volume the same for all tests, so I'll be at volume 20 on my Pioneer 80 PRS, and I'm going to be using a SSA meter as I trace this, and a iPod for my frequency response. So these are the tools that I'm going to be using to test for my output level and show you how critical it is. And um, one other thing I want to mention is remember when you go full tilt, if you have your subsonic set at a certain volume level, it's going to affect how much output your amplifier is going to be putting out, even at a higher frequency range. So this is another thing I want to show in this video and demonstrate. And this is going to be tested through the meter to show you output level. Output level is hardest to measure by ear, so by output level with a decibel reading is the only way to really truly know. So here we go. We'll start off with this first test. Remember my subsonic was set at 12 o'clock. So. So it's going to be low decibels, low volume, but it doesn't matter. And we're going to remember these numbers throughout. So it doesn't matter what type of decibel I have on my system. Use the concept for your build. So remember the 114.57 dB. That's the number that we're going to want to remember for this. So 114.57. So what I'm about to do now is go back to the back. I'm going to adjust my subsonic. I'm going to bring it down to off to show you the difference in output first. So I did forget my meter or my uh, little tool I use to turn it down. Sorry for the noise. So I use this little tool. It's rusted. All it is is different gauge measurements. So I'm gonna turn it off. So as you can see, I have it off. So use this concept for your build. So test this when you do it. You could do it by ear too. So I have it turned off. Remember when I turn it off, if I play down to 15 Hertz, it's gonna be almost full tilt, full power. But the reason for subsonic, as I mentioned earlier, is it cuts off frequencies below a certain range at a certain decibel level per octave of the tuning. That makes sense to you guys, hopefully. All right, so I have it off. So now we're going to go in and we're going to see how it does. I didn't change the volume. Here's the number. 14.57. Let's do it again. All right. Sweep. I'm using a 30 to 60 hertz sweep tone to test. Watch the difference in output. Right now it's 15.92 so remember the number before so 15.92 while before we were at 14.57 so we went from 
14.57 to 15.92. So that's a pretty big jump. Um, that's obviously at least a dB, almost a dB and a half. So now I'm going to go adjust it to the subsonic that I would normally set it on. So I'm going to show you real quick. So what I'm trying to demonstrate in this video is concept more than just testing. And this is very important feature that your amplifier has. Most amplifiers have if you're a Class C monoblock is this subsonic. So I had it off. Why it was louder is because with it off, the way the octave tuning subsonic frequency cutoff point, when it wasn't, it wasn't off, it was at 10 hertz, but that's pretty much off because it's all the way down. What's happening with this is it's allowing more power to feature and release around that 45 to 55 hertz range up here with it being turned all the way down. So that's the reason that as I turn the subsonic down, there's more output. So whenever you tune or you set your gain match, you gain match your amps or you set your um, gain on your volume level of your head unit and on your amplifier, you always want to make sure you have this subsonic set to a uh, a crucial point that you want. So throughout this video, hopefully this teaches you where you want to set it. You always want to set the subsonic normally around half an octave below your tuning. So my enclosure is tuned to around 44 to 46 hertz. So I honestly want to drop my tuning half an octave. So half of 45 would be 23 and then half of 23 is around 11 to 12. So I want to bring it to around 35 hertz ideally so this is where I would normally set it so the reason I put it up this high is because when I set my gain I want to set my gain up to around that point so 35 Hertz would be around the two o'clock mark on this amplifier somewhere around there two to three o'clock so so watch the output difference but the reason I'm doing this is to protect the amplifier I mean the subwoofer so the subwoofer doesn't bottom out. So if your tuning on your enclosure is at 30 hertz, then I would turn it to around the three to four o'clock range, not the one to two o'clock range like I am, but I'm tuned a little higher. But watch the decibel level change from this. And this is very important concept that you want to understand with how critical subsonic is for output. But it's gonna allow for a more clean signal. The decibel level is gonna be lower. I can tell you that right now, but the benefit and the point of this is what you want to understand for why subsonic is so important. So hopefully this teaches you guys some stuff. All right, so remember, we had it at 0.592 and then 4.57. Uh, now for my final test for this video. All right, stay tuned for more videos. Stuff like this I like to teach. It's the concept that matters that you grasp out of it and you can use for your own system. All right, so we're going to see the difference in the score. It's going to be quieter, my guess. We'll see, though. All right, so it's down quite a bit, which is a good thing. So you might wonder, well, why would I want to have it turned up like that? So I just wanted to show you, the reason I showed this video is if your subsonic's turned off versus turned around 20 to 25 hertz versus half an octave below your enclosure, that difference in dB, let me show you real quick. On this test, on lower volume, the test change was, so we went from 114.57 to 115.92, back down to 114.19. So that octave of change in tuning affects your decibel level as well as your output and your clean signal of your enclosure and how the power reacts to the power that is being supplied from the output of the amplifier from your subsonic. So maybe that makes sense or maybe it doesn't. I could be wrong, but this is something that I've noticed through just testing and tuning. Set your subsonic appropriate to your enclosure. Make sure you have it. If you're a ported enclosure, you wanna be within half an octave. So how do you know what half an octave is? It's literally just divide your tuning by half and then half it again. So just do times 0.25, times a quarter of your tuning. That's what subsonic was below your tuning. If you're a, four, a fourth order enclosure or sixth order, you normally want to set your, on the fourth order case scenario, you want to set your subsonic to 
normally around half an octave below the tuning of your sealed in enclosure, not your ported. So like if you're say your sealed section is tuned to like 28, then usually it'd be around 20, 21 hertz. Ported enclosure is half an octave. Sixth orders is the same half an octave of your rear tuning since rear tuning is the lowest. But hopefully this taught you something. So I'm gonna have my subsonic set here. My gains are set. I'll have to reset my gains based off of the subsonic level I set here, but that's gonna give me a cleaner signal and allow me to protect my subwoofer to ensure that I know I'm getting a clean signal to my subwoofer without having to worry about clipping or um, distortion as well as overload or unload of the enclosure which reacts to the subwoofer. So I know the cone control is gonna be great with the subsonic set where it is. So hope this taught you something. Stay tuned, subscribe if you have it, like the video, and I got more videos to come to teach you concept. Later.